There is a growing awareness among people of the underlying spiritual nature in all things. We all want to unite with the energy that makes and guides the universe, but it is the way we see reality that stops us from learning our true nature and purpose. Our mission is to uncover evidence and explain the mysteries which connect science and spirituality. By seeking out those with remarkable insight who are willing to come forth and disclose valuable information, we hope to find the truth about human potential, what we really are and where we came from. If we answer this, we answer everything. There are those, however, who would not want us to succeed. To begin our journey of discovery, we searched for someone who thinks outside the box, someone who could show us a different way of viewing the world. We found John Hutchison, the discoverer of a collection of strange phenomena known as the Hutchison Effect. We're going to go see John Hutchison, mm -hmm. who has some sort of anti-gravity device. Right, and his whole apartment is built all around these buttons and gadgets and stuff. So how in the world does he make this incredible device in a tiny apartment here in Vancouver? I have no idea. You know what? I think I just found it. Wow. Look at that. That's, That's incredible. amazing. He's got an anti-aircraft gun. He's got a generator. He's got a transformer up there. This guy is... A bell, too. This is, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like this. Wow. Let's go meet him. Yeah, we're going to check this guy out. Yeah. Okay. Or he's right here. Right there. All right, he's going to come here. There he is. Hey, John. Here. Hey, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you how doing? How are you? Dominique, nice to finally meet you. Pleasure, ma'am. Hey, I'm Rob. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? Good, good, thanks. That's good to hear. I'm not sure what to expect. How can his laboratory also be his apartment? My intuition tells me that he is sincere and wants to share his discoveries with others. Okay, so this is the laboratory. This is the laboratory. And behind this unusual door, you'll find a lot of unique things. And on the door, of course. Central okay. Intelligence Agency. Yes. I see we're not um, the first people who've been here. No. There's been a lot of interesting folks that have been here. All right, let's take a look behind let's it. see. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Behind here we door go. Number three here. Wow. Look at all these buttons and gadgets. I've never seen anything like this before. On the floor there is an amazing amount of metal samples from yeah. the 1980s experiments. Wow. But I drag them out and There's save time one. by dragging them out that mm. way. Is this gold? Oh, that's actually brass. brass. So this is what happens when the metals are affected by this gravitational field. That's right, yes. Sometimes they'll lift up or they'll turn into jelly or fall apart or actually convert into another unknown alloy. And how long does it take for it to get mushy? It can take a few minutes, sometimes seconds, and it just turns into looks like a pile of gooey metallic stuff, and it just starts moving around, falls apart, and stays that, stays that way after the machines are turned off. So by changing the frequencies, you can change the effect that it has on these different objects? And pretty well, yes. Yes, if, uh, the heaviest object I levitated was 1,500 pounds, and then another person, another team did it too, in, in the bigger labs. And it's not heat. There's some other process that's going on. Some other process yeah. work, working on the atomic level, I believe. Yeah. It's the just radio waves and unusual things. You ever put any organic substances on this thing? And Actually, we did. We put our dinners in there one time. <laughs> we see what happened. And, well, it tasted good. So you have a toilet here. Yeah, the, the, the throne. She's inspecting it. Oh, my goodness grief. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I just... How do you do? I sit there and take my vitamins all in one kind of operation. So what's this right here? That's a transmission unit mm -hmm. that I use in some of my experiments. It's a naval piece. And I'll be turning that on a little shortly. How come so much of this stuff is radio gear? Mm, it's all naval radio transmission gear and receiving units. And I use the high voltage and power supplies and that, converting them into usable power like uh, like a Tesla coil has energy. Well, I don't need the sparks, but I just need the energy from the different machines. So most of your stuff is, is ex-military? All ex-military. Mm -hmm. We're talking, what, a million volts, 100 million volts? Oh, no voltage like that. No, that's in the big uh, labs that you tell that, but um, roughly about 20,000, 30,000 volts. Now, some of the stuff looks like oscilloscope. Some of it looks like it's uh, transmitting equipment, receiving two-way equipment. Uh, what we see 
just about everything having to do with radio. Do you need to generate radio signals on all frequencies or just specific ones? I have to do multi-band uh, radio frequencies for the experiments. And I, along with that, I also generate electrostatic power. Didn't you get raided by the government? There was a major raid in 1991. Okay. Who, who, who raided 1990. you? Uh, right. Government guys. But I was in Europe at the time, so they okay. took the entire 22-ton lab and... They took all the stuff? All the stuff. Really? Buried it and put it in barrels and they tried to keep it a secret, but the main newspapers, Vancouver Sun, found out about it and put it headline news. Mm. So all these samples now are, are again, a, a result of your various tweaking of your equipment and, and your experiments. Have you ever had metal uh, uh, just react in a way that perhaps it just disintegrated or exploded or anything like we that? We had large bars of it where the end of it would just simply not explode but just fall apart into a, a soft unknown alloy. John, wow. can you try and show us an experiment? I can show you an experiment which will probably happen within here. What I have in that area, that's another room, a machine room actually, but in the center of it is some of the high voltage equipment and test samples. Mm -hmm. And I got a small video cam to see what I'm doing because I'll be operating all the controls around in here. Yep, that's good. I'm going way back in the back here and turn on the other machines. Ha ah, ah. okay. ha. We engage certain um, Klystron power supply units and what I'm doing is adjusting some high voltage in there uh, along with electrostatic energy and RF fields. Go this guy here. Okay, John, what is that wheel that you turn, that you're turning to, to, to change the energy? What is that? That's actually a phase shifting wheel. Okay. It activates generators in the other room and I can shift phase negative or positive one way or the other. All right. And I have an indicator system here that shows me up here when I'm doing it. Or a, also a, a gauge system where you can probably see it here, negative or positive. If I do it slow and then I have the, the main one up here and that engages the, what they call variometers. What their variometer is, is a coil and has an inner coil that tilts back and forth a little bit. So the RF frequency or radio waves are then ca caught and manipulated through phase shifting. This unit goes into a CM11, which is a uh, old style Navy transmitter. Basically here, it's just more or less um, monitoring or running those pieces of equipment. I think I'm doing all right here. I got everything on. Power up the energy here. I'm just gonna rest my hand on this 50 caliber machine gun. Kind of oily. Yeah, okay. I can hear something powering up. That's incredible. Well, that's interesting. Now I take in heat into consideration if there's spark gaps in that, they heat up and the frequencies adjust. So what I try and do is compensate all the time. Okay. And these instrumentations, they help me a little bit on determining that. Nothing's happening. Or overheated a bit. Can't tell from the monitor, but I'll try. I got it cranked to max. Yeah, we've got a spike there, but. Yeah. Oh. Got something levitating in there. It's levitating. Dominique, we're going to shut down now. Okay. Oh, 
John, what we saw was really interesting. You had this canister that seemed to levitate and be spinning. You have, you have things just uh, randomly uh, scattered around and this field could affect them regardless of where they're positioned? Yes, the ra actually the range on the fields is up to 300 feet. It was measured by Los Alamos in 1983. Now, in this apartment, everything is so congested that uh, it affects other people's um, stuff upstairs or next door and that. It is a problem trying to do anything really in, in this confined space. Okay, now this is really interesting. This one here is, um, again, it's um, aluminum bar stock with a kitchen knife that sat on top and floated inside of the metal and we- Floated inside the metal? Yeah. So it was like, this part was melting and then it, it was, it's like it was floating on top of water kind of thing? Kind of like that, and it just sort of fell inside the metal and stuck after we machined it down to expose the actual knife itself. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, the experiments that you're doing here, does that recreate the Hutchinson effect or is that only done at an industrial lab? Well, no, here it's the uh, original Hutchinson effect is created, but not on such a dynamic level as in the industrial spaces because of the problem with power. Not enough juice around here. Not enough, enough juice in here. How come the government isn't using this technology to build cars? And instead of using um, gasoline, which pollutes the air, isn't there something like free energy that we could use and implement into a vehicle? Oh, there's all types of free energy out there. Yeah. It's known as zero-point energy, and it's um, pretty well a bona fide energy source. But in the matter of national security, these guys are keeping it to themselves and experimenting in the national laboratories with this technology. Do think the military is using anti-gravity technology for their aircraft? Oh, for sure. They used the high voltage already years ago for the stealth bomber, given an extra lifting power. They cover it in a certain material and then they add high voltage to it and that gives it a hex, kind of an extended wing. Thanks for showing us the, uh, yeah. the equipment. We really had a, a very electrifying time here. Actually, so did I. <laughs> it was a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure, man. Thanks, John. Great. Off to the next adventure we are. Okay, That's sir. That's right. <laughs> Have fun. Don't get lost out there.